Today I'm testing two outrageously cool STEM machines for kids, a super fast 3D printer, and a cardboard cutter, both of which I'm sure your kids are going to love. Now both of these machines were sent to me by SaneSmart to review, specifically the 3D printer since that's their newest product, so in this video I'm going to go through unboxing, through setup, and then ease of use since after all these are made for kids, so well, they should be easy. Hopefully I'm able to make some pretty cool projects with these machines, and at the end of the video I'll give you my suggestion on which one you should buy if you're going to choose just one. Now let's jump into it. Starting off with the 3D printer, because let's be honest, that's probably what you're most interested in, this is marketed as a toy for children and should essentially be plug and play. I have never owned or even used a 3D printer, so for the purposes of this video, I will be acting as a child since my daughter's only three years old and this is supposed to be used with adult supervision when you're under six. I don't think it would be fair to give this to a three-year-old and make a review based off her understanding of it. So instead, you get a 33-year-old's understanding of it. Good enough. Anyway, out of the box we have the printer itself along with its power cord, some simple tools like tweezers, a screwdriver, and glue stick, and then the roll of filament and a rack to rest it on along with a tube to feed it through. Now I should mention that as I opened this I had no idea what that glue stick was for, and well, I didn't find that out till later when, well, you'll see. It's also important to mention that I did not read the directions at this point, and if I had, it would have specified how to remove this foam and in what order. Because I didn't read them, I think I broke off a small fan that I didn't really realize until I started looking inside. Eventually I realized where it gets mounted, there's a small plate in the back that fits it. It's pretty easy to find when you actually look. Again, I'm not sure if I broke that by removing the foam incorrectly or, well, if it's transported like that. Either way, I figured it out. The filament rack gets mounted to the back of the machine, and the tube that it feeds through mounts to two clips on the back of the machine and then another on the top of the nozzle. From there, you just mount the filament, cut a 45 degree angle, and then fish it through the tube until it stops. Pretty simple. With everything assembled, I should be able to turn this thing on, select my language and location settings, connect to my Wi-Fi, and then hopefully choose from the 1500 preloaded designs to, well, start printing. And I have watched enough 3D printing videos to know that the first thing you should ever print on a new machine is a little benchy boat. So let's do that. Unfortunately, about one minute into this print is when I realized that the glue stick that came with this machine should probably have been used on the bed. I am no expert, but I'm pretty sure 3D prints shouldn't fly off the surface like that, and well, clearly this isn't working. So after adding glue to the bed and moving the entire printer into my house because I figured the cold temperatures in my New England shop probably didn't help either, let's try this again and see what happens. And not to spoil anything, but I don't care what my three-year-old thinks, this is probably my personal new favorite toy. This thing is pretty sweet. After about 38 minutes and approximately 3600 millimeter of used filament, we have a completed benchy boat with an absurdly tall smokestack, but overall, I mean, this thing came out awesome. There are some spaghetti marks on the first layer, but I mean, for a toy printer, I'm not gonna complain. Let's try to build something else. And what better to print than something extremely annoying like a whistle? The real reason I wanted to print this was not to annoy my wife, but instead to see if the ball inside the whistle could be printed and then separated after it was done. And it turns out, it could be. I think that's pretty cool. We have a functioning whistle. Let's move on. I let my daughter choose a project and she decided she wanted a seashell, which turned out so good that you could even hear the ocean. After that, I decided that I needed a functional project, so I printed a new rack for a larger spool of filament, since the one that comes with it is just super tiny. This is a preloaded design because they know this is going to be an issue, and it is a large design that took, I think, about an hour and a half. Overall, it came out good, and it does attach to the machine, and seems to work. The final test for this 3D printer will be a very long two-part carve to try to make a large Mac-style truck, and, well, it's going to be purple because... I got purple PLA. The first print, which is the cab of the truck, ended up working, and I was able to remove the wheels and axles and pop them into place so that the wheels can actually spin. Pretty cool. The back of the truck took even longer to print at about two hours, but not only did that print successfully with four spinning tires, but the trailer snaps directly into the cab that we just printed earlier, and everything seems to work perfectly. 
Now I will say that this is essentially just a very, very cheaply made plastic toy, but I do think it's cool that I can make it within a few hours, and guess what? My daughter even played with it for, well, a minute or two. Alright, enough with the 3D printer, even though it's super cool, and let's move on to the comparison toy, the Beaverbot Cardboard Cutter. This is a much simpler machine than the 3D printer, so the review is going to be a lot faster, but don't let that take away from how cool this toy actually is. Inside the box you'll find some included cardboard with pictures of fish on the top that you can cut out, some random components to plug it in and work on it like allen wrenches and screwdrivers, and then a little bag of parts that I soon realized were for a fishing game that they clearly want me to make. After plugging it in there is nothing to do other than start cutting, like my daughter is doing here to try to cut out those fish. Now remember, she is only three years old, so she's not the best at cutting curves, but she is improving, and after coloring the fish that I helped her cut out, I was able to attach some metal pins, and eventually we had a real fishing game. Great success. Alright, so some quick features about this machine. Underneath the cutting surface, I found some storage where there was actually a hole punch, as well as a scoring tool that I didn't actually know were in there, so that's kind of neat. The cutter itself is not actually a blade, but instead I would describe it as kind of a spinning, biting mechanism that just chomps away at the cardboard. And as a result of that, there is a drawer in the back of this machine that collects all the debris, which ends up looking like something that I used to buy in high school. But anyway, moving on. Now my wife wanted me to point out that the drawer does not collect everything and there will be some residue left on the table, but it's easy enough to clean up with a vacuum or rag. And because my daughter is not the best at this, I decided that I should probably try to make her something to show how cool this is, maybe like this truck that I saw someone make online. Because we made that truck with the 3D printer, I think making a truck with the cardboard cutter will be a good comparison, showing what these machines can do, and I really think you're going to be impressed with my work here. So without further ado, here's my truck. Alright, I gave up halfway through because this is much harder than it looks, but anyway my daughter loves this machine, and now let's talk about which one you should buy if you have to buy just one. Drum roll please, the answer is... the cardboard cutter. And the reason is I am skewed toward the fact that I have a 3 year old and she is just simply too young for that 3D printer. That being said, if you have an older kid, they would probably love the 3D printer, especially if they can design their own software. I've already been using that printer to make some tools for myself, but again, this is based on which your child would like and not which, well, I would like. So not to waste any more of your time, if you have a small child that is looking to be hands-on and make cool things, the cardboard cutter is certainly your best option here. This is a great machine to teach them how to build things, and because I am a woodworker, I look at this as a stepping stone to a scroll saw. So yeah, that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching this video, and if you want to buy one of these machines, check out the affiliate links in the video description, which helps support the channel. I'll see you next time.